In a time long ago, there lived in the kingdom of Galomir a sorcerer named Zerok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia in the battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude. How demons fell before him like wheat before the scythe and how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galamir, and a time of peace began, which was to last for a hundred years. And then the sorcerer returned.
It has risen again. Sir Daniel Fortescue, see? The hero of Gallomere who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we knows better. Let it alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Serac and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. Our bone-headed protagonist, born again into this age of wonders. In life, he was just the worst. A coward, a cheat, a philatelist. Oh, was it a philanderer? I don't recall. But either way, he seems to have woken up uh, different. Perhaps he can redeem himself. Xerox should be more careful where he aims his dark magic. Morton was so happy when Dan died. Surely he initially had a lot of housework to do, but now he's got the place to himself and just how he likes it. Of course, Dan coming back to life was a bit of a shock, but Morton will do anything he can to keep his home buddy safe and get him back to the earthy darkness as quickly as possible. Can you imagine how boring it would be to be a sentient being wise even, and be stuck permanently to a brick wall. No wonder these guys are grumpy. They pass time by eavesdropping, gossiping, and badmouthing any bizarre-looking adventures that might pass by. It is said that Xerox's preoccupation with necromancy stems from an obsession to resurrect his childhood puppy. <sighs> Let's just reflect for a moment. Isn't that just tragic? All this poor troubled soul has ever wanted is to command the forces of darkness, enslave mankind, and play ball one last time with dear old Mr. Snuffy. You must be out of shape after 100 years lying on your back. Use the crypt to get to grips with your new lease on life. Any treasure that you find will be added to your coin total. Coins are used to buy items from the greedy merchant gargoyles. Some weapons contain powers and abilities beyond the ordinary. Be sure to test every weapon to discover their secondary abilities. Some weapon abilities are immediate, and some may need a bit of time to charge before they realize their full potential. During your travels through Galamir, you will collect many items. To see your items or to use one, review your inventory. In it, you will also find your Book of Galamir, which will keep a record of the denizens you've encountered and bestow you with keen insights that only a disembodied voice could provide.
when you're ready to leave this crypt, you'll find an exit at the end of the hall. To unlock the gates, you must find a rune stone and place it in the ornate hand set next to the doorway. You will find life bottles throughout Galamir. They contain the same magic that rose you from your slumber and will raise you from the dead once again. When your life is low, using this bottle will help you feel a little better. And remember to fill it when you can. down Zerok by retracing his diabolical odyssey through Galomir. You can spot the exits from an area by looking out for his stinking trail of magic slime. These guys were fashionably undead before it was fashionable to be undead. Your brain may have long since rotted, but that won't stop them from eating it. Just a few chops should do them in. Be careful not to miss. Oh, that would be embarrassing. Welcome back to your beloved Galamir. The stinking dead have risen up to dance with the lifeless living, and they want to do it over your dead body. That small light following you around is a wisp. The heroes of the hall are not supposed to intervene in mortal affairs, but when they heard that Sir Daniel Fortescue had a shot at redemption, well, they decided to give you a hand with your depth perception. He will circle enemies, helping you direct your ranged attacks, but he'll also let you know what things might merit a closer look. Sometimes it may be useful to view the world from a different point of view. Be sure to take a moment from time to time to enjoy the beauty of our beloved Galamir. Keep your eye peeled for anything interesting.
Don't let zombies get you down. Tend those wounds by stepping into this fountain of rejuvenation. Remember, nothing remains hidden under the gaze of an angel. The object here is the chalice. Every time you dispatch an enemy with a soul, the chalice fills a little more. Fill the chalice and then collect it and you will be worthy of visiting the sacred Hall of Heroes to claim a new weapon. There is a chalice to be found in every region of Galamir. They are all hidden or well guarded. Only a true hero will collect the full set. The living world lies beyond these skull gates. The master of the hilltop mausoleum, the stained glass demon, has possession of the skull key. Feel free to have a paddle in the shallow water, but don't be tempted to go for a swim. Buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition. <laughs> softly. Zarek awaits beyond these gates. The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum, hatching plots of purest evil. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scarce.
Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. If they think you're worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. To pay homage to the heroes, stand in front of their designated statues and await spiritual guidance. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold. You could take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire and it can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it at the Battle of Galamir. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Kardak. A clean kill through the eye at some thousand yards. <laughs> Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. <laughs> oh. Goodbye, sir.